Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is your friendly neighborhood Oxhorn, or your nearly friendly boarhood Oxhorn, or your boarly friendly neighborhood. O you know what? I think I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> anyway, this is Oxhorn, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm here today with another great mod overview video, this time on one of the best utilitarian mods that I have found to date, especially for players who are running on survival. It is called The Mobile Mechanic by Fading Signal. It is a super awesome mod that gives you this mobile crafting station that allows you to scrap items on the fly, including weapons and armor and junk, as well as repair your power armor from anywhere in the world, as long as you can carry it with you. Here is how it works. You craft the portable workbench at the chemistry station. Under the utilities section, scroll on down until you find portable workbench. Things are nicely organized by the word portable, so you find it all in one section. The first thing you need to craft is the actual portable workbench. It costs four steel, four aluminum, four rubber, and four plastic. But it doesn't have any perk requirements to build. Once that's done, then you need to craft the workbench kit for the type of workbench that you want to use. There are five workbench kits. Armor, chemistry, scrap, stove, and weapon. The armor kit requires scrapper one and armorer one, and costs four steel and two adhesive. The chemistry kit requires scrapper one and chemist one, and costs two steel and two adhesive. The scrap kit simply requires scrapper one, and costs four steel, two adhesive, and two aluminum. The stove kit requires scrapper one, costs four steel and two adhesive. And finally, the weapon kit requires scrapper one and gun nut one, and costs four steel and two adhesive. You have to have these workbench kits in your inventory in order to get the portable workbench to work. I'll explain how the two work with each other in just a minute. The portable power armor station is different from all of the workbench kits. It's a standalone workbench that you need to craft separately from the portable workbench. It requires scrapper one and armorer one, and costs four steel, four aluminum, two rubber, two plastic, two gear, and two circuitry. In order to repair your suit of power armor while out in the field, you gotta have this portable power armor station in your inventory. Also, for the sake of immersion, this mod comes with two really cool new masks. Welding goggles with the lens, which costs two aluminum, two plastic, and two rubber to make. And a welding mask by itself, which costs two aluminum, two plastic, and two rubber to make. If you're super into role-playing, you can keep one of these with you so that when you're sitting there working on your power armor, it looks like you're hard at work protecting your eyes from those searing flames. All right, let's test this out. Here we are in downtown Quincy, right across from the Lungs Pharmacy and uh, the burn pile. <clears throat> and uh, this is how it, it's used. So let me get out of my suit of power armor here. And then let's open up our, our Pip-Boy, zoom on in, go over to miscellaneous and scroll all the way down to the portable section because uh, thankfully the mod author named everything really conveniently portable power armor station and then all of the different portable workbenches let's start by dropping the portable power armor station and what it does is it generates the workstation directly in front of you wherever you need it so as long as your suit of power armor is close enough to it this is the mat that the power armor will stand on and I think that's close enough to it. Let's try. And boom, check it out. Oh, it looks so great. You can now upgrade your suit of power armor directly from here. It looks like I don't have the components on me, but uh, that's just a quick demo of how the power armor station works. And it's so cool because there have been so many situations, especially on my Brotherhood of Steel character, where I've busted up my legs or busted my arms and I haven't been able to find a power armor station to repair it. So this is a really cool little mod for that. Uh, when you're done, just come on over to it and go space bar to pick it up. And it goes back in your inventory. Remember that it is 15 pounds. It's not light by any means. It looks really cool, but it is a very heavy power armor station. All right, now let's use the portable workstation here in Quincy 
To do so, open up your Pip-Boy, go to miscellaneous, and scroll all the way down to the P section of your uh, miscellaneous list until you find the portable workstation. Portable workbench. To get it to work, just drop it. And boom, the portable workbench appears directly in, for, uh, in front of you. To work on any project, just click activate, and then a menu pops up asking you to choose what bench you want to use. Now, you can only use the bench that you crafted the kit for back at your chemistry station. Remember how we crafted those uh, workbench kits? You gotta have those in your inventory, but if you do, then the option to use that bench will uh, will show up here in the list. And then if you're done, scroll all the way to the bottom and choose pack up the workbench. But let's uh, let's use the scrap station right here since this is probably what's most exciting about the mod. When you choose that, you have the option to scrap every junk item in your inventory, which, as you can imagine, is extremely useful and powerful, but not uh, might not be suitable for every circumstance, especially if you want to save certain junk pieces for decorating your settlements or something like that. So the other option is Scrap Selected. If you choose that, then uh, basically the Container Transfer uh, menu pops up, and then you can go to your junk section and choose what items you want to scrap. Let's try the metal bucket. When you're done, click tab to exit. Then a dialog box pops up confirming that you really want to scrap those items. And this is your last opportunity to cancel. So we'll click continue. And then in the top left hand corner, we get an alert that those items are now in our inventory. Yay, scrapping is complete. And be sure to wait for this scrapping is complete dialog box to pop up because you don't want to mess up the scripts or interrupt them or something like that. So just be patient and wait. And I'll show you really quickly how to scrap everything just so that you can see how long it takes. You saw what I had in my junk folder. Uh, not a whole lot, but this is how it works. Go scrap all, click continue. You gotta wait for the sound effect to finish and the process to finish. And there, once you get the dialog box, then you're done and you can continue. Now let's take a look at some of the other workbenches. We could craft chems, we can cook, we can edit weapons, and we can edit armor. Uh, now, the thing is, each of these kits weighs four pounds, which is pretty heavy. So I would only bring the ones you absolutely need with you. For example, the chem station is useful, but chems themselves are extremely light. You could probably craft hundreds of jet and stim packs and blood packs for the same weight of simply having the chem station kit in your inventory. So this might not be a useful one to take with you. Same with the cooking stove. Most foods tend to be pretty light anyway, and cooking stoves are pretty plentiful in the Commonwealth. You find cooking stoves all over the place, so I probably wouldn't take that one. But the weapon and armor benches are really useful because you're constantly finding weapons that are themselves really heavy, and you don't want to miss out on the resources, but you also don't want to lug the weapon around. So let's try the weapon bench. And it works just like any other weapon bench. So here are some of the weapons in my inventory, and these are all junk items. And from here I can scrap it. Let's scrap that. Scrap that. Scrap that. Oh, look at that. Scrap it. Pretty sweet. And then just tab out to exit. Let's try the armor. And we got the same thing. Do we have anything here? Look, I don't need that batting hel helmet. Let's uh, scrap that. And let's see, anything else? Oh look, a mining helmet. Scrap that. Oh, I got myself some steel. This can greatly improve your ability to scrap items in dungeons you go to, since you can actually loot all of the weapons that fall now and scrap them to greatly reduce their weight. Super, super useful. Now when you're done and you want to pack this thing up to go, Go to activate, scroll all the way to the bottom, and select pack up workbench. Look at that. We're good to go, ladies and gentlemen. How about that? While we're at it, let's talk about uh, one of Fading Signal's other mods called Compact Crafting, which uses the same mesh that came in his mobile mechanic, only it gives you an all-in-one compact workbench for your settlement. But what's really cool is that he took this a step further and he made a unique compact workbench 
for every type of workbench your settlement could ever need. They cost fewer resources to build, but they require the same perks, local leader 2, in order to build them. There's a compact weapon workbench, an all-in-one workbench, which allows you to perform the functions of all the workbenches combined in one, very similar to the one that we uh, already used in the mobile mechanic. A compact armor workbench. Two different chemistry stations, each with different decorations. And the very same beautiful power armor station that came with Mobile Mechanic. Super compact, really easy to use. I absolutely love the power armor station. These are going to be great in settlements that are pretty tight, like Hangman's Alley, for example. If you're short on space, but you want to have these workbenches in your settlement because you just want to see settlers perform the workbench animation, or because you use it as a player home and you really need access to these on a frequent basis, but you just don't have room for the large ones, these are perfect. The mod author Fading Signal creates excellent mods, and these are really high quality, top-notch mods. He explains that he doesn't have a standalone compact cooking station because... There's already a pretty compact version, and he didn't feel like it needed to be reduced in size anymore. And even though they're tiny, they do work just like any other workbench in the game. All they do is save space. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you liked that video, please subscribe for more Fallout 4 videos and more mod overviews. I only review the very best stuff that I come across. And if you love what I do and you want to find some other way of supporting me, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I now have a Patreon profile which uh, gives people who are interested an opportunity to support me personally instead of just uh, watching my videos. Patreon subscribers get access to a bunch of other cool stuff, including a private chat during my live show that has priority, and I also answer their questions live during some of my videos. Today's question comes from Rick. He asks, Hey, do you ever do a Let's Play series on Fallout? Gosh, it's hard to shoot ghouls while I'm answering questions. I know you've played the game. I'm just curious if you recorded it. Also, I saw your vid on logic gates. Any idea if you can use them to turn your lights in a settlement on at certain times and then off at later times? Well, to answer your first question, yes, I do do Let's Plays about Fallout 4. Uh, I don't have a set schedule at the moment, but now that I do this full time, I am considering having a set schedule. Additionally, I do have my weekly show, Scotch and Smoke Rings, which airs every Thursday at uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And sometimes I play Fallout 4 in addition to other games. So uh, be sure to check out that. And then just follow me here on YouTube because anytime I have an unannounced live stream, I stream here on YouTube. And so if you happen to be on, you'll catch it. And to answer your second question, yeah, logic gates are extremely powerful. And you can do a lot of really cool things with them, including setting up uh, timers and switches that can detect what time of day it is. Now, in order to get that to work, I recommend a mod called Better Nixie Tubes. I did an entire video review on that mod many, many months ago. But what that mod allows you to do is set up a time of day clock and then connect it to a switch so that anything attached to that switch can turn on or off. That's going to be infinitely easier to use than the logic gates that came with uh, Contraptions Workshop. So that's what I would recommend. Thank you for your questions, and please check me out on Patreon if at all you're interested. But more than anything, I'm just glad that you're all here watching. Thanks for joining the Oxhorn community, and I'll see you all very soon.